Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended adds a new array of tools and features for working with 3D files. We're going to start by going to a custom workspace built for working in 3D called the Advanced 3D Workspace. You'll find this in the upper right hand corner of the interface. The hub of the Advanced 3D Workflow in Photoshop is the 3D panel. The 3D panel is context sensitive, so in order to use it we need to first select a 3D layer. When a 3D layer is not selected, you will not have any options in the 3D panel. So I'm going to go back and select my 3D layer. In order to get a better view of this car, I'm going to rotate the view. To do that, I can select one of the navigational tools here in the Tools panel on the left-hand side. Note that these tools are now non-modular. Essentially, that means that you don't need to enter a 3D mode to manipulate 3D objects. To use this tool, simply click it to select it in the Tools panel, and then click and drag in the interface to make the change. After adjusting this car to my liking, I can go back to the Tools panel and click on any other tool for additional work in Photoshop. Now, let's go back to the 3D panel. At the top of the 3D panel, we have four buttons. This first button on the left is the Scene button. It shows us all the content of our 3D scene. These other three are for filtering those results. We'll come back to those in a moment. As I mentioned, this Scene tab allows us to see all of the mesh objects, materials, and lights in our 3D scene. We could also come down here towards the bottom of the panel to adjust options for the entire scene. At the top, we can choose from different render settings. We could also click here to create our own custom render settings. New to Photoshop CS4 Extended is the powerful Ray Traced Render Mode. The Ray Traced Render preset allows for a higher quality render, including reflections and shadows. Notice that once we switch to the Ray Traced Render Mode, the reflections on the side of the car become much cleaner and crisper. We could also adjust the quality of the anti-alias settings. Better and Best look better than Draft, but they also take longer to render. For now, I'm going to leave my anti-alias settings at better, and for the rest of the tutorial, I'll leave my render settings at solid. Now using the control and tab keys on my keyboard at the same time, that shortcut works for both platforms, by the way, I'm going to go over to another document I have open here. This is a sphere created in Scratch from Photoshop, and I'm going to select a brush with black paint. Another thing that you can do in the scene area of the 3D panel is change what type of paint you're using. With the Paint On drop-down set to Diffuse, when I paint with black, I actually paint the object black. If I hit the letter K on my keyboard, that's a shortcut for the navigational tool that will allow me to rotate this object around. And I can see that I've actually painted on the object. And again, this is because I've chosen to paint on the Diffuse channel. However, from this drop-down, we can have our paint in Photoshop paint on a variety of different maps. For this, I'll choose Bump. Now when I paint with that same black, we're going to be painting on the bump map. However, because this object was created from scratch in Photoshop, no bump map texture exists. But that's okay because Photoshop will create one for us. So I'm going to select OK here. And now when I paint with black, I'm creating the illusion that we're actually changing the surface of the object. You see that a little bit more clearly as I rotate that around. I'm still painting with black, but we've changed the paint on dropdown. Photoshop's powerful painting engine can also be used to directly alter opacity, reflectivity, self-illumination, and other attributes. To get a closer look at an object's materials, we can click these squares in the Scene tab in the 3D panel. These represent an object's materials. We could also click this Disclosure triangle to collapse and expand individual objects. That can help to keep this panel organized if you have a lot going on in your scene. If we want to see just the mesh objects in the 3D panel and focus on those, we can click this first filter, the second tab from the left, the Filter by Meshes button. Here we can select an object to see a thumbnail of it and to see additional information such as the number of vertices or materials. The next button shows you only the materials in a scene. Here we have individual access to the properties that you can paint on and others as well. We can also increase the value of many of these properties. If I want to make this bump that I painted more pronounced, I can click and drag on the word bump strength to increase that. And now we have a more intense bump. Let's go back to the car to see another example of this. Again, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control tab on both platforms to get there. Now with Material tab selected, I can see again all the materials in this scene. And the sake of this car, I want to show you that you can actually increase the reflectivity as well. So I'm going to select the car paint texture and click and drag on the word reflectivity to increase the amount of reflectivity of the material. Now this is a little bit too reflective but you can see how you can increase that just by coming to the Material Editor and adjusting that here. If the object does not have a particular map applied, say for example for reflectivity and you want to use a map to control this property, 
you can click this little flyout menu and create a brand new texture from scratch or click load texture to import one. Finally, we can go to the light filter at the top of the scene panel and see all the lights in our scene. There are several different types of lights in Photoshop CS4 Extended, including point lights, spotlights, and infinite lights. In this scene, we only have infinite lights. Now we could turn lights on and off by clicking these eye icons, similar to the way we would with layers. As you can see when I click the eye icon here, the light turned off and these wheels in this chrome got a little bit darker. Even though this light was created as an infinite light, the type of light can still be changed. To change the light's type, I'm going to select it, and then from this drop down, just change the type of light you'd like it to become. In this case, I'm going to choose Spot to change this to a spotlight. Now we could see a spotlight show up in the spotlights area here. We could also create new lights by going to the new icon at the bottom of the 3D panel. And I'm going to click new point light. We now have a point light in our scene. These icons next to the light type give you descriptions of basically what these lights are going to do. Point lights emanate light in every direction like light bulbs. Spotlights emit light in a cone shape. And infinite lights shoot out lights in a parallel direction. Now we could also move and adjust the lights in our document. Let's say, for example, I select this infinite light. I can click on one of these navigational controls to adjust it. Let's say, for example, I click this top one to rotate the light. If I click and drag in my scene and rotate around, you can see that I'm actually changing how the light is hitting my 3D object. From the 3D panel, I could also click and drag to adjust the intensity of the light. I could also click in the color swatch to change the color of the light. And I could click Create Shadows to create shadows and adjust those shadows here as well. Photoshop CS4 Extended also adds the ability to animate objects in 3D space. This is done in the Animation panel, which can be accessed from the Window menu at the top of the interface. This is like Window, Animation. Now to recenter this, I'm going to double-click the Hand tool in the Tools panel. I'm going to resize my Timeline panel so I can see a little better. Now this car is on Layer 1, and if I click the triangle to the left of the name Layer 1, you can see that not only can I now animate position, opacity, and styles I could before, but now in CS4 I can animate additional properties such as 3D object position, 3D camera position, and 3D cross section. To animate this object in 3D space, I'm going to make sure I'm at the first frame here with my current time indicator. I'm going to click the stopwatch for 3D object position. I'm going to move out in time a little bit. And I'm just going to adjust the rotation of the object. Now I simply go back to the first frame, and then I'm going to hit the space bar to preview. And so there is our 3D animation of our car. You can scrub this and see that it's animating in 3D space. So there you have it. Whether you're using the non-modular navigation tools, or the powerful new 3D panel, or animating in 3D, these new tools in Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended allow for more power and creativity in your 3D workflow.